Hey guys, my name is Siklas Hoshmed and welcome to another episode of my series Blitz and Talk. And I'm going to do exactly that in just a few moments. So let's go ahead to the Chess24 website. Here we are and this is where I play my Blitz games on. And I just noticed actually that I'm on the front page here with my opening series about the Nimtsu Indian defense. Right next to quite a strong guy here, Peter Swidler top 20 in the world. So if you would like to learn uh, this opening, the Nimtsu Indian, then feel free to check out my series. So enough advertisement, we are not here to just talk about my opening series, we are here to play a blitz game. And so I'll go into the lobby and I'll search for an opponent, five minutes, and I found one pretty quickly. Sasha Hohenzollern, that sounds like a German guy. But his flag says he's from Italy, so I don't know what that means. Maybe he's Italian and German. So we're having a French on the board. I play my move knight 2 In the past I've played knight c3, but I came to the conclusion that knight 2 is a more solid approach against the French and leads to more pleasant positions, at least for me, because I like positions where I maybe have a slight edge and I'm not risking too much. All right, and especially against c5, that's true. We will see a lot of positions where white is just having a slight edge, not too much going on, but you can simply play for the advantage and you don't really have to worry about anything. Whereas in third knight c3, you often have positions which are strategically complex, maybe close, and it is not clear completely how, what is going on. All right, he plays bishop g4, that's quite an unusual, unusual move to to may moves a knight f6 and knight c6 and actually against both white replies with bishop b5 so I'll just play that anyway because I'm developing my bishop with check and preparing my kingside castle here. And I'm not too worried about this um, pin and honestly I could play h3 right now and ask this bishop um, what he's going to do. But maybe he's going to bother me with queen e7 or something. So I just castle, that can't be wrong. Also, idea, of course, to place a rook on the e-file. And you can see his queen set is completely undeveloped. He still needs some time to bring his piece into play and to um, put his king into a safe spot. So he plays bishop e7, which makes sense to close down the e-file. Now I play h3. And if he plays the bishop back to h5, I can actually consider g4 followed by knight e5 and I'll just go ahead and do that. Win some space here. I know it's double edged because on the other hand I'm also weakening up my king but I think right now the benefit of me putting a knight on e5, putting pressure on c6 is clearly outweighing the weakening of my king. He plays knight f6. This appears to be rather strange because now I can simply take on c6 and take back with the bishop and obviously win the exchange on a8 and material wise already have a really good position. So let's take this guy off and follow up with the pin on the e-file so he can't castle because then his bishop would be hanging and I think it will be quite unpleasant for him to get out of this pin because I can increase the pressure with queen e2. So objectively speaking this position is definitely already lost for him. So I play queen e2, he has to defend this bishop, his only way is to play queen to d8 and he does that and now I would like to increase the pressure somehow. One idea would be b3 followed by bishop a3 but he could play king f8 possibly. Um, so I'm not sure if that really helps me that much. So I simply play knight f3, idea to take on d4 and also opening up the diagonal for my bishop. D3, okay, I just take this guy off. That doesn't bother me. Knight C5, and now he wants to take on D3, obviously, in some way or the other. So the question is, how do I respond? I guess I just protect the pawn on D3 with Knight E5 and also possibly take off this bishop on g6. 
and notice that still he cannot castle because I would take on g6 followed by taking on e7. So he's still stuck in the center and that's really unpleasant because you really want to get your king away from the center and also bring your rook into play. The rook on h8 is not doing anything. Alright, so he plays knight e6. There was also a threat of knight c6, so that's definitely a good move. But I will just keep increasing the pressure f4 with the idea f5. And of course, I'm weakening my king, but he's not having any attacking pieces really at the moment. I mean, he can give a check on b6, but well, I simply play bishop e3 or move my king, and that's really not a problem. So it is kind of double edged to open up your king, but um, only if you're opponent has the resources to attack you and this is clearly not the case right now and my threat of f5 is quite annoying to him i believe he plays f6 but this just seems to blunder everything pretty much i can take on g6 followed by taking on e6 and even though i'm opening up the h file he's just down a rook then and he will not have enough attacking prospects here so he takes on h Three, I can give a check on g8 and exchange queens already if, I, if I'm really too worried about um, his queen. But I'm not, so um, I'll just play king g2. And if the rook takes d3, I can even think about rook h1. And the rook is coming to, down to h8 and I believe he cannot absolutely do nothing against this threat. And there will be a checkmate really, really soon. Um, no, rook h8 is pretty much undefendable. And you can see I didn't even need my rook on a1 and the bishop on c1 to win this game. All right. So I expect my opponent to resign pretty soon here because there is no defense against rook h8. And now he resigns. So I believe the his mistake uh, we can find pretty early in the game um, bishop g4 was already slightly strange i mean it's not a big problem but the two main moves are bishop knight c6 and knight f6 clearly or a6 is also a possible move but then again here after h3 maybe just retreat the bishop to d7 that would be more natural because here after g4 bishop g6 knight e5 um, I'm now attacking this guy on c6, so he probably should have played queen c7, but I can follow up with c4 is in, the, is in the position and maybe possibly even f4, even though I'm not completely sure black could play f6. And um, I still think I'm better here, but of course this is a completely different game. I mean, black definitely has chances here, whereas in the game it is just over after I win the exchange and he's also stuck in the center. All right. Thanks for watching guys and see you next time. Bye.